Hi guys, Luton here. Now, today I've got a cutting room video talking to you about something very important. It's talking about syncing your live commentary and your video. Now, this isn't a tutorial just showing how to click the live commentary button or select your microphone. What I'm going to be talking to you about is technical troubleshooting, all right? If you have a problem where you've been using the live commentary feature on the Elgato Game Capture HD and you find that your live commentary is not in sync, I'm going to show you how to resolve that problem. Now, it's taken me a long time actually to kind of find out all the bits and pieces. And also, it's not just one fix. Um, I found a couple of different little things, um, all which help, all which you need to be aware of. Now, the first thing, it's quite important. Uh, the first thing is the, the main way that you will resolve your problem, okay? Now, when you record, normally what you would just do is click record, click live commentary, and you're good to go. Now, you want to make sure that in order, before you do that, you actually have your um, preferences set up correctly in order to actually record. Now, the other thing you want to make sure is that no other applications are running on your computer. And there's a good reason for this. The reason for this is that what your Elgato and your what your computer has to do when you're recording a live commentary is combine your live commentary, which comes in from a separate source than the video and audio from the game, and combine them together in the software. And that's actually, you know, video rendering and, and video creation is actually a bit of a tricky thing, you know, it, it requires a bit of effort from your computer, okay? And especially when you consider the fact that when you click, you know, stop on your record, the, the file is right there, it's ready to go immediately. So the Elgato software actually has to kind of really work pretty hard to kind of put those two things together. So you really want to make sure that your computer is, is running to the max and putting all the effort it can into making sure that file is produced successfully. And so to do this, as I say, the main thing you want to do is make sure no other applications are running that aren't necessary. You also are going to want to go to your Game Capture HD preferences. So you can just bring down the bar here. It's off the top, but anyway, you click preferences, go here. Now you can see I've, that's my selection for where my library is. And then what you want to do here, now enable flashback recording. Now normally that's checked. And flashback recording is great, okay? If you're recording live games like Battlefield or whatever, and you're not live coming, flashback is great because what it does is it creates a temporary file so that if you forget to click record, or maybe you just don't want to record because you're in games, you don't want to record everything you're playing. So when you find something that's actually worth it, you can scroll back through some of the gameplay and then you choose where to start recording and it will record from that point and it has a temporary file there, as I say. And then once you stop recording, that file automatically is deleted. So it's not creating tons of extra uh, footage or you know memory usage on your computer. It's just creating a temporary file there for you to use it. However, whilst it's doing that, it, it is, again, it's using, using the sort of power of your computer and it's using up some of the sort of the parameters of the software so if you disable that it's just an extra thing it's not having to do and that is going to help actually with the syncing of your audio it's a big factor so turn that off and then it doesn't have to worry about that it can just focus on what it's doing with your live commentary now the next thing you're going to want to do um i don't actually have anything connected right now so i'm just this is just a technical explanation okay now the next thing you're going to want to do is when you actually start to record there is a certain order and a reason why you do things now, first of all, you don't want to have live commentary enabled first, all right? So you can see right here, there's live com enabled, all right? Now, you want to make sure that's dis disabled first. So you're going to want to click record on here first. Then you're going to want to click live commentary once it's started. So record, then live commentary. And then last of all, you're going to want to go down here and click the pause button, okay? Now, that's not going to stop your recording, but it's just going to stop the gameplay being displayed sort of live on your screen. So it will stop it kind of feeding live. And you can see you've got the live button here. So you click pause, okay? And you see it get a little play button there. And then again, that's a, another thing that the computer is not having to do, all right? Because with the flashback, it's having to create a separate file whilst at the same time, so it's processing that. And then it's also going to stop this. If you have a live video running, that's again, a, a huge sort of drain there. And that's another factor in ensuring that your audio comes in correctly in sync. So we're going to stop recording. So I'll just have a blank file here now. So those are the main things. Also, I should say, just it, it's just a technical thing, but when you actually finish recording, click Live Com first and then click Stop Record. Again, just a tiny little thing that may help. Um, but it, the main features are, as I say, turning off flashback, pausing, and, and beginning in that order. And that, that should actually resolve all sync problems. 
Now there's one last thing that I want to mention as well and it's to do with the setup. Now this is only going to happen with certain titles but it is something that I came aware of this week that you need to be aware of. Now if you click into the, the device all right, and then you have the settings feature here it brings up this window. Now you use this when you're changing between different devices. So for me, for example, I record from the PlayStation and the PC. So for the PlayStation 3, I have it set to component, HD720, I have my quality set up here, sort of near the top end, and I have preserve source format. Now, preserve source format, I have, fa I have found, okay, it works correctly, but if you change between um, a game or an input of different resolution, you actually need to recheck this. Now, I don't know whether they would sort of verify this, but I have found that this is what happens. So I'll give you an example, okay? I was playing on the PlayStation at HD 720, all right? And then, uh, and the games I was playing were 720, all right? So most games on the PlayStation are up 720, all right, for their resolution when you watch them on screen. However, then I went to play Super Hang On, now that is a small title that's been remastered in HD. So when you watch it on TV, okay, it comes, it outputs from the PS at 1080. Now, although I had Preserve Source Format checked from live coming another title, all right, when I came to record that, it was out of sync, even though I did everything I just said. And the reason was, this preserve, it didn't preserve the source format correctly, all right, because when it came with 1080, it didn't sort of recognize it properly. And the way you have to do this, all right, so say we're in 720, and then you go to a game which you want to record, which is a higher resolution or a lower resolution even. You want to go into here, you want to uncheck preserve source format, go OK, and then open it again, and then click on it again, and then go OK. And then what that's going to do, it's going to force the program to kind of reread its input, all right? So it's going to rethink and go, OK, we're actually in this resolution, and then you do everything else that we've said, and then that should keep it in sync again. Now, similarly, you've got to do the same thing if you're changing between devices, all right? So, for example, I'm in PlayStation HD 720. So, if I'm going to set myself up for the PC, all right, I'm going to go Other. It goes HDMI. Go 1080. Put it down here and better, because you don't need the full max. It saves you a lot of quality. So, if I'm recording from the PC, I go about here. Now, again, uncheck Preserve Source. Turn it off, turn it back on, preserve source, OK. And that's going to force it to correctly recognize the input, and it's going to preserve the source coming in, make sure that that stays within sync with your recording. So guys, that's what I've found will actually help keep your videos in sync. Um, as I say, I'm sure that it was not still going to work in every possible situation because these kind of things are very, very glitchy. There's a lot of, there's many, many different reasons why videos can go out of sync. I've even heard of people's gameplay uh, itself going out of sync. I don't have any solutions for that. But this will help you with live commentary. It has worked for me, and I have to say, which is a massive relief because it's a horrible, horrible headache when you have this problem. Um, I hope this helps you guys out. Feel free to put any questions below. If I can answer them, I will. But as I say, I hope this has really helped. Those are the main things to remember though, okay? Disable flashback. Make sure that you pause your recording as you play so it doesn't live stream and render on screen. It's going to save you a ton of power and it's going to make sure that this program will actually keep your commentary in sync. And by the way, we're not talking about a massive sync, but often it can lose its sync over a period of time. So it starts to just ever so slightly lose it. And by the end of the video, you may be like one second, two seconds out, which is awful. Thanks for watching today, guys. If you've enjoyed, if this has helped you out, please drop me a like and I'll see you next time for some more Cutting Room.